So today you're here to hear about prescription for one, personalized medicine and you. And so we have three speakers for today. And um, here's a little bit. <laughs> so first there's Monica, and she's in the Department of Genetics. And um, Xiao, and he's in neuroscience. And Eric is in cell biology. Um, so they're all grad students at Yale. And they're very excited to talk to you um, about personalized medicine. And the structure of how, how we structure the talks is um, each one of the speakers will talk for about 15 to 20 minutes. And so, um, so today, they're going to introduce um, personalized medicine and then give an introduction first to the human genome and talk a little bit about pharmacogenetics, what that means, what that means to you, and then um, talk about stem cells and kind of like where um, this is going. Um, so there will be room for questions at the end. And um, thanks for coming. Hope you enjoy it. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Monica. I'll get us uh, started off today with a, an introduction to uh, genomes and disease and how knowledge of the human genome is helping us uh, forge ahead in the field of personalized medicine. So to start, I'll tell you guys a little bit about what personalized medicine is, what we mean by that. So um, traditional approaches to medicine are population-based and kind of based on this one-size-fits-all method where you assume, well, you know, this is the case for most people, so let's assume we can treat the disease this way for, you know, everybody. So let me give you an example of that. Um, let's say breast cancer. On average, uh, breast cancer doesn't appear until you're 50, so doctors say you don't really worry about getting a mammogram until you're in your 50s. Um, and then if they see anything, maybe they'll do a biopsy, then if they find something after blood work, they might you know, suggest chemotherapy and surgery and all these things. Um, but basically, it's a reactive approach. You don't do anything about a disease until you see symptoms. And oftentimes, by that point, it might be a little bit too late for, symptoms, for current treatments to work quite as effectively. Um, so one, some of the things you can do in traditional medicine now is they'll say, oh, is there a history of this in your family, et cetera, et cetera. And that can be helpful, you know, but that's not the case for everybody because even if you share a portion of your genes with your family members, you don't share every gene. You might not inherit the same gene as your brother or sister, aunt or uncle. Um, and furthermore, some people don't know their family history. What if you're adopted and you don't know your family history? So the goal for personalized medicine is to really individualize the way doctors think about prevention, uh, diagnosis, treatment, all of these things. Um, and so basically, if it was... Uh, a personalized medical approach, your doctor would do something like look at your human genome, for example, and see if you carry a gene that increases your risk for breast cancer. And then with that information that you got from your DNA, you would be able to take steps to maybe prevent the disease altogether. Or you could just elect to start having mammograms earlier, or you could do some radical change, like just get a whole mastectomy and be done with the whole thing. But it gives you a number of uh, pieces of information that you can use early on. So you take a more preventive approach. So I said the word genome about a million times in the last slide, so I'll tell you guys what the human genome is. Basically, it's the entire collection of all the DNA in your body. And uh, DNA is the molecule of life. It's basically the set of instructions that you need to survive. It's how your body knows what to make, when to make, and how much to make. And the things they're making are these little machines called proteins. So you probably heard the term protein in the sense that you have to eat protein in your diet and things like that. But really what you do is you eat it, you break it down, and you make the little machines that you need every day for healing and growing and breathing and eating and everything else. Um, so where does your genome reside? So you look at your hand, you zoom in a little, maybe you can see some wrinkles or something, you can't really see much. But if you look a lot closer, you don't have to actually eat layers of skin. Uh, those layers are made up of individual cells. Each of these cells is carrying out a large number of tasks because inside of every cell you have all these little machines that help the cell transport its sugars and salts and fluids and food and divide and grow and do all these things because inside every cell is a nucleus. And inside of that nucleus is your genome distributed among 46 chromosomes. Well, 23 chromosomes, you have a copy from mom and dad. And if you look even closer at those chromosomes, what you'll see is these long, long strands of DNA. Lots of DNA. Three billion base pairs of DNA. So what is DNA? DNA is, like I said, the molecule of life. It has a really, really long name. It's called deoxyribonucleic acid. And basically, it's the set of instructions that you need to survive. 
And it's a language just like any other. Who knows what this is? What is it? It's an alphabet, and it's made of what? Letters. Letters. Okay, so the genetic alphabet, the DNA alphabet, it's also made of letters, except it's four letters instead of 26 letters, A, T, C, and G. But instead of letters, we call them nucleotides, and instead of writing them like this, we write them like this. This is the language of biology and history. <laughs> okay? That's the basic idea. And what do you do with letters, right? So you put them together to make words. So in English, C, A, T spells what? Cat. Cat. Okay. So in the genetic language, if you had C, A, and T, C standing for cytosine, A for adenine, T for thymine, you put those together and that instructs your body to make histidine, which is an amino acid. What is an amino acid? It's a building block of protein, like little Legos that you stack together to build all kinds of structures. That's what an amino acid is. So you have these letters, and you can put these letters together in all sorts of ways to make all sorts of words. If you put words together, what can you make? Sentences. You can make messages, right? And so what do your body, what does your body do with this information? What do you do with all these instructions and messages that you're writing out in this genetic code? You're making those proteins, you're instructing your body how to do that. And the way that you do that is you read these letters three at a time. All the <coughs> language words in the human genome are three words long. So you read along the genome and that instructs you which amino acids to put together to make proteins like this one here, which is hemoglobin, which is how your red blood cells carry oxygen to your cells, okay? And so eventually, if you have all these three billion nucleotides, right, put together to make all these words, and you have all these sentences, in fact, you have 20,000 sentences, 20,000 genes in your human genome, in every cell of your body, that's a lot of instructions. More to fill one, but you fill several books. So a chromosome is basically a piece of DNA that has about a book's worth of instructions for how to do the things that your body needs to do, like when to grow, when to sleep, when to eat, when to heal if you have a cut, all of these things are controlled by genes. There are all little proteins in your body that do these tasks. And how you make those proteins is encoded in your DNA. You have these chromosomes from mom to dad, basically different versions of the same set of books, okay? And this whole set of books together is the human genome. Inside every single cell you have every instruction you would ever need to accomplish any bodily task that you have to, you know, do everything.